I came across this clip today talking about a Buddhist monk and what they think enlightenment is, and I just want to play it and then talk about it a little bit. So I'm going to mute myself quickly. So Enlightenment is when we fully understand the Four Noble Truths. The first Noble Truth is that this ordinary life of ours involves suffering. The second Noble Truth is that our suffering is caused by our craving and our desires. The third Noble Truth is that this suffering can be ended by letting go of craving. And the fourth Noble Truth is the Noble Eightfold Path, the Buddha's teachings which lead to the ending of suffering. Then at 11, we eat our one meal of the day, and we have to eat. There we go. Um, yeah, so what they're saying here, it makes a little bit of sense, but I'm wondering if, like, when you give up on the desires, if that doesn't, like... So life involves suffering. Of course life is going to involve suffering. Everyone comes into the world, everyone leaves the world, and it's very sad sometimes when people leave the world unexpectedly. You will leave the world um, someday, and I, I hopefully it's the best that you can be, but, like you'll die, so there's at least going to be some suffering there, maybe. Um, anyways, suffering is caused by our desires. It's too hard for me, because on one hand, I understand where they're coming from here, because when I was quitting smoking, the physical, like, the withdrawal that I thought I was having was caused by the desire for the nicotine and then uh, withholding it from myself. So it wasn't even that the chemical, like, the chemical nicotine itself has a very small withdrawal that's hardly noticeable. It's the mental, in the, it's the mental side of it that then produces the physical symptoms your body perceives. So, like, I've literally, like, it's amazing what the mind can do, and, like, through studying placebos and seeing, like, what, like, literally, the mind is so strong, we have to test against it for all medicine to see how effective it is. So, with nicotine withdrawal, when I was still smoking, I wasn't able to have nicotine, like, I would have, like, it would feel like my head was getting, like, squished in, like, the brain compressed from all angles. I would, like, physically, like, my sinuses would get stuffed up. I would feel achy and just irritated. And the amazing thing was, this was all due to the fact that I was desiring nicotine, but not allowing myself to hit it, or not capable of hitting it in the current environment that I was in. And after I read The Easy Way to Quit by Alan Carr, and he talks about how it's actually really easy to quit nicotine, and, like, if you can go four hours without smoking, it, like, the feeling you have then is the worst it gets. The rest of it's just psychological. So, seeing that, understanding that, I was then able to notice when those thoughts came up of, huh, I want a cigarette right now. And then I would kind of sit with that desire and be like, no, no, I don't really want it. And by sitting with it and letting it go, instead of letting it, like, just build up behind a wall, I was able to, like, avoid the suffering, avoid the pain from the, caused by the nicotine control. But, like, I'm wondering here if that necessarily applies to all of life, because if, it seems like, desires, like, I had really good desires. I have, like, desires to see my family. I have desires to, like, win competitions. I had desires to win wrestling matches back in high school and college. I had desires to go to nationals for college, which I did. I had desires to, like, become an engineer. And I'm wondering if it's kind of like divorcing yourself from life here. You're like, no, we're just going to cut off all desires. Because, like, you're made with desires. Like, the desire for food the desire for like reproduction like you have biological desires within you 
And I'm not sure if, like, again, I haven't gone too in-depth on the teachings here, but, like, from what I'm seeing in the video, I'm wondering if it's actually good to try to cut those off. And if you're trying to take life, which is, like, I don't know, sometimes you, uh, get your desire, it spikes up, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. And instead you're like, you know what, if I never desire anything and I just eat, like, rice and do nothing and besides meditate, my life will be constantly flat. I'll never be sad. And I'm just like, you could have a nice, not never sad life. Or you could have a really happy life and then some sad parts and then some really happy ones. Yeah, honestly, right now, I'm like, I'd rather have the good and the bad and I know I say that now but I have some videos on my channel back when I came from Europe and I had food poisoning thank you Delta um, yeah no I got food poisoning from the flight and I was like <laughs> lying there in pain and so much agony and I'm like yeah I'd rather like fully feel this and be conscious and aware then try to distract myself, go on my phone, and, like, never have this feeling. And after that, I made a bunch of videos talking about how we never fully appreciate how good we have it until we feel the pain. And whenever you ask someone, like, oh, what's your pain out of 10? They're like, oh, it's like a 7 out of 10. And then, like, I don't know, you get stung by a wasp. My pain is a 7 out of 10. You get your finger ripped off by a belt sander. You're like... No, no, it's like a 9 out of 10. Like, yeah, it hit your head extremely hard. You're like, nah, it's like a 10 out of 10. But like, it just, I don't know. We forget that there's an infinite amount of pain to experience. So we judge it based off of what's relative to our life and what we're most, com uh, what we spend our time in the presence of. So, I don't know. This is just a rant for me to look back on one day and see what I thought my thoughts were about this. But I'd rather live a life with desire and achieve those desires than to give up on ever achieving them. It seems kind of like a sad existence. We are just like, you know what? I could desire things, but those things might not happen. So let's not desire anything at all. And I, I think they kind of took a philosophy that was working and that they've noticed patterns for, such as with nicotine control, which which must have other parallels to other things in life. And then they just, like, blew it up. Again, that could just be my interpretation from this one video about this, or just the teachings of this one monastery. So I don't want to, like... I know it says Dane in Buddhist monk, but I know... Even in Christianity, there's many teachings, many interpretations of it. So I'm not necessarily trying to speak to all of it. And, I don't know, drop a comment down below if you have any comments. But, yeah, peace out. How do I end? There we go, there's my mouse.